So we're going to move into another segment of the show, right, Fritz? Yeah, this is, uh, this is new. We're going to have a little debate, a presidential-style debate in a very hot area mm -hmm. of technology, mobile device management, MDM. That's right. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to invite uh, our vice president and director of Information Week Research to lead that debate. And in the field of uh, mobile device management, we have two competitors here. One of them is Good Technology, the other one is Mobile Iron. And so from Good Technology, we have uh, John Harama, he's the Senior Vice President of Corporate Strategy for the company. And then we have Ojas Rege from, from, uh, from Mobile Iron to uh, lead his company into the debate. So at this point, what I'd like to do is turn it over to our colleague, Art Whitman. Art, the floor is yours. Thanks, David. As you mentioned, this is one of the hottest and most contentious areas uh, within IT. So, and we are holding a presidential style debate, so I'll ask the audience please to not cheer or to boo any of the people. Uh, please hold your applause till the end. If you do cheer or applaud, we'll turn the camera around on you and single you out and uh, make fun of you. Actually, you, you can cheer if you want to. Um, so there's been no quicker rise than there has been for mobile devices within the enterprise. There's been a greater variety of devices taking uh, prominent places in the pockets of people who have some very critical information and want access to it wherever they go and whatever they're doing. That is a nightmare for IT, particularly when combined with the rapid pace of introduction of new devices. So that's why we've asked John and August here today to have a little debate with us. And we did a coin flip at the beginning, and we're going to have X each of them to do, do a very quick explanation of how their technology works and what their approach is. And oh, just won that coin class, so I'll give it to you. Okay, thank you. So mobile iron exists because business is going mobile. And a lot of the challenges that come up as a result of that cannot be solved by companies with the technology that they own today. One of our customers is a big bank in the Northeast. And their IT manager responsible for mobility been there 10, 15 years. First time we met the CEO was last year when he turned around and there was the CEO in his cube with his brand new iPad saying, make this work. Now that CEO and that IT guy, those are our customers. The Mobile Iron is the only platform that was purpose built for this post BlackBerry world of mobility. And we secure and manage mobile apps and mobile devices while preserving the core user experience that Apple, Google, Samsung, and the others have created. So we are not an email company. OK. Thank you. Uh, John, quick introduction. Yeah, so good technology. We've been doing this for a long time. And from the very start of our company, our focus has always been on making sure that data is secure. Um, because at the end of the day, when you're a government agency, a bank, healthcare company, um, really managing a device for its own sake is, is not something you're looking to do. What you're trying to do is make sure that your data, as it's being consumed by users on these devices, remains secure, remains compliant, and doesn't find its way into other applications or other services or other devices that are outside your control. So while there are some aspects of device management that we think are useful, um, ultimately our approach is based on making sure that in the context of the actual business applications, the data is always secure and controlled and cannot leave that environment unless it's allowed to do so based on policy. And so what we find is in this world where it is a bring your own device world now, the traditional model of locking everything down, blacklisting an app, doesn't work. So what you have to focus on is the actual data. And if you can control the data, then you can have security and compliance, and then you can let the user do whatever they want in their personal life on that device. And we think that's the best way to eat your cake and, and have it too. OK, so oh, just one of the points that uh, John brought up there was that developing a closed environment actually is beneficial because you actually know when the data is, well, how to keep it safe within that environment. However, you don't necessarily have access to other applications. Do you agree with that approach? 
One thing that we've always got to remember with mobility is there's one person who matters, and that's the user. If I'm a user and I go to the Apple store and I buy an iPad, I want to use that iPad. Right? I want that experience that Apple built. I don't want to use a different application for my email. I want to use that app. That's the challenge that the enterprise needs to solve, which is how do we let that user use the experience they love and then manage the security on the back end so that the user isn't forced to do different things and separate out their own life. John, what do you think? Well, you know, again, I think the, well, first, we shouldn't focus just on, on, on email because uh, there's nothing about our solution, our approach that is actually just limited to email applications. Um, but I think at the end of the day, there's, there's a sort of an artificial way of thinking about this, which is the user wants to use a particular native application and that our approach somehow prevents that. Look, if you want to use the native email application for Gmail, um, or if you want to use Dropbox in your personal life, you're free to do that with our model. The difference is, is we do provide certain applications, for example, email and a secure browser, because the native applications don't meet the security, compliance, and data control requirements of our customers. So we think we actually deliver the best experience for the user in their personal life because we can give IT the control they need. And IT doesn't have to say, sorry, you can't actually use iCloud because my data is going to end up there if I use the native client. You don't have to say, eh, sorry, I have to take Dropbox away and blacklist it, or I have to block your access to business data. Um, with our model, IT can focus on their apps, their data, and the user can still enjoy all the wonderful applications and all the aspects of the app model, Pandora, Dropbox, iCloud, without having any interference based on IT policy. But very importantly, IT policy doesn't have to be changed to accommodate that. And that's how you get the win-win. OK, changing gears just slightly here. One of the biggest concerns that we see from enterprises is just the rate of introduction of new operating systems for these devices and new devices in general. So what's your approach to actually keeping up with that? How close do you trail an introduction of a new device? And what sort of promises can you make to an enterprise that you'll actually be there when they have a new device to use? And I'll just let you take that one first. So when we first started building the Mobile Iron product in 2008, we were building it from scratch for the multi-OS world. The iPhone had just hit the year before, and from day one, we thought to ourselves, every year, every two years, new operating systems may actually make their mark. And so the entire code base was built from day one, understanding that. And that ends up being critical for an enterprise, because every global enterprise now needs to support three to five mobile operating systems. The challenge is they don't know how that three to five is going to change in two years, in three years. And so when you're purpose built from day one for multi-OS, you think about these things through, and that's actually helped us tremendously with the next generation of OSs that we've seen in the last few years. John? Yeah, again, we've been doing this uh, a long time. So we were doing this when there was Palm OS, Windows Mobile, Symbian, now Android, now iOS, um, Windows Phone 7. And so as a company, we're really good at keeping up with the new platforms, uh, making sure that our uh, security technology can be ported over to those platforms. Um, and we take a very, very simple approach. We watch the market. Um, we see what our customers are asking for. Um, and then we support those platforms that the demand is around. So everything from uh, iOS, Many, many flavors of Android. Um, we're launching uh, support for the Windows Phone 7 app platform in uh, March. And one thing that's very important is that because of our approach, all the variability in those different platforms from a security standpoint, from an API standpoint, we actually take that out of the equation for our customers because they know with our approach, they have a consistent approach to encryption, a uh, consistent approach to policy, uh, and a consistent approach to data loss prevention. And it doesn't matter what a given device or platform does or does not, very often does not, um, have built into it. So do either of you know offhand of a number of different permutations of devices in OS that you support right now? Yeah. 
Well, a absolutely, because uh, one of the things of our, our architecture, um, it, it, we have this component in the middle called the NOC, um, which actually allows us to see from an activation standpoint every single device, every make model um, that our customers are using. And we actually publish this um, out on our website on good.com. We put out a quarterly data report where we talk about makes and models, OS platforms, um, what financial services customers are activating versus healthcare. Um, so that data is all out there for anybody that wants to see it. So I was looking for a number like 26. I'm sorry, 26? <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 We'll, well say 41. Well, what I can say is certainly on the Android side, I mean, that's where the greatest diversity is, and we support literally hundreds of makes and models um, across every flavor from 1.x all the way through, you know, 4 and beyond. Otis, very quickly. There, there are a lot of permutations, without a doubt, but there, there's a fundamental issue, John, with what you're talking about, which is, again, if I buy an Android device, I want to use the Android communications apps. If I buy an iPhone device or an iPad, I want to use those. So telling users that they have to use a different application that's not the reason they bought that device in order to communicate in their enterprise actually goes against the core of user experience. You end up in a position where you are actually competing against the native experience that Apple and Google have built for email and browsing. And our fundamental view is that those native experiences win, and you have to provide platform-wide security to support that. All right, that's going to be our final word there. Thank you very much for participating in our first ever debate. Uh, the audience is free to cheer if they want to now for the two uh, <laughs> debaters.